In this lesson, we will grapple with a big issue in science. No measurement is absolutely perfect. We will first discuss the difference between accuracy and precision, and I'll share how scientists use numbers called significant figures to communicate the precision of measurements. These sig figs, as they're called, come with rules to follow during mathematical operations like addition and multiplication. As I said, no measurement is absolutely perfect. For example, this scale claims the apple is 202.2 grams. However, it's unlikely that the apple is exactly 202.2 grams. It could be 202.201 grams. It could be 202.199 grams. The scientists want to know how accurate and precise any given measurement is. The terms accuracy and precision are meaningless without repeated measurement. A series of precise measurements will be tightly clustered. clustered. To determine the accuracy or precision of a measurement, we need to make multiple trials. A series of precise measurements will be tightly clustered, while imprecise measurements will have a lot of variation. A series of accurate measurements will be close to the true value. If we take the average of many accurate measurements, we will arrive at the true value or at least nearby. While there are errors in measurements, when there are errors in measurements, accuracy and precision will suffer. There are two types of errors. Random or indeterminate errors affect the precision of a measurement by increasing the variability of each measurement. An example of a random error would be trying to weigh yourself on a scale during an earthquake. The value would be jumping all over the place. Systematic or determinate errors affect the accuracy of a measurement by shifting the average of the measurement. An example of a systematic error would be attempting to weigh yourself while wearing a heavy backpack. Each measurement would be increased by the weight of the backpack. Different scientific instruments have different levels of precision. Let's imagine you're trying to measure this cute little snail on two different scales. Which scale do you think is more precise? The answer is that the right scale is more precise than the left scale. Going off of only the information on the left scale, the true value could be anywhere between 1.5 grams and 2.4 grams. However, looking at the right scale, we know the true value can't be 1.5 grams or 2.4 grams. We still don't know the exact value, and we never will, but we can be more confident that we're getting closer. In science, the number of digits in a measurement represents the precision. In general, more digits means more precise. There is no perfect measurement. In other words, every measurement contains uncertainty. Scientists use the word significant figures to represent the precision of a measurement. There is no perfect measurement in science. In other words, every measurement contains uncertainty. And the last digit of any measurement is estimated. For example, in this volume measurement, I know the volume is at least 23 milliliters, and I've estimated the last digit to be 0.2. It's possible that the true value is closer to 23.1. It's possible that the true value is closer to 23.3. But it's not possible for the true value to be 22.3, or 12.3, or 123.3. The digits that we write down are called significant, and the greater the number of significant digits, the closer it is to the true value. Of course, scientists have rules on how to represent sig figs, as we'll show in the next few slides. First, all non-zero digits are always significant, and any zeros sandwiched between non-zero digits are also significant. Pay close attention to decimal points. Any zeros to the right of a non-zero digit are significant if there is a decimal point. Zeros to the left of non-zeros are never significant. Even if there is a decimal, the zeros to the left of the non-zero numbers are not significant. This is because those zeros communicate something else, the scale of the measurement. If there is no decimal, 
Zeros to the right of the last non-zero are usually not significant, but unfortunately in this case, it's a bit ambiguous. This is why I recommend writing large numbers using scientific notation. With scientific notation, it's totally easy to count the number of sig figs because it's always the number of digits in the first number. This slide summarizes the previous rules on sig figs all in one place, which is pretty neato. Now, there are two instances where numbers contain absolutely no uncertainty. That is, they have infinite significant figures. These are counted values, like for instance, this is exactly seven pennies, as well as price precisely defined values, such as the conversion between milligrams and grams, or the fact that there are always exactly three feet in one yard. Moving on, we have specific rules for how to do calculations with significant figures. There are two rules for sig figs when doing calculations. The easiest rule is for multiplication and division, where the final value is rounded to the number of sig figs of the least precise starting measurement. In this case, we take a number with four sig figs, divide it by a number with two sig figs, and round the answer to two sig figs. In addition and subtraction, you want to line up the decimal places of the measurement and then round the final value to the least precise decimal place. In this case, we're adding a value that is precise to the thousandth place to a value that is precise to the tenths place. And so we will therefore round the final value to the tenths place. Lastly, if a calculation involves multiple steps, please wait until the very end to worry about rounding and sig figs.